This video looks into Sloth Squadron's changes to CSGO in more depth. I suggest that you check out the subreddit in the description of this video which will remain up to date with the latest guides, tweaks and downloads. Every weapon has been changed in some way and I'll be going through the categories later on. Sloth Squadron took me on a fascinating journey behind the scenes to the numbers that define each of the weapons of Counter-Strike. They don't look like much to the casual observer but he has been watching them change for years. He began noticing inconsistencies with which figures changed. Well, of course some are changed in the name of balance, you expect that, but he started to point out interesting discrepancies with these changes. He even had theories as to why they had occurred, explaining how some values have been left neglected yet still included since the earlier games, while some updates would change most weapons but would leave others the same for no logical reason. One example of this is the MAC-10's ridiculous accuracy when climbing a ladder when compared with other weapons, such as the Bison. His weapon balance project has three main goals. Number 1. To improve some questionable design choices for some of the guns. There's nothing wrong with rewarding players for using weapons in particular ways, provided it isn't open to blatant abuse. It's hard to defend the accuracy of scout jumping when in conjunction with the hitbox problems or how the Tech 9's run and gun accuracy has been exploited in countless games. This mod reduces the effectiveness of the said tactics, which go against the gameplay that most of CSGO tries to encourage. First shot accuracy has been increased. Many players from 1.6 had their tap fire playstyle ruined once they moved to CSGO due to how inconsistent core weapons were at range. Contesting long sightlines became about using smokes and flashes to close the gap in order to compensate for this inaccuracy, rather than landing skillful long range shots. The level of inaccuracy that rifles should have has always been up for debate. In short, this mod should make tap firing and bursting a lot more viable, with spraying remaining mostly the same. Jumping accuracy is now more punishing to prevent players from abusing certain positions and the broken hitboxes. Another nice little touch is that weapons such as the FAMAS and Galil now have reserve ammunition that are multiple of their magazine capacity, so you now have three spare magazines rather than two and a bit, which always seems strange to me. Number 2. To improve the overall balance between guns while still keeping the meta game similar to its present form. This is the tricky one so it will require playtesting to see whether Sloth Squadron's adjustments are balanced. The now buffed Deagle may once again overshadow the other pistols, but hopefully this won't be the case and other pistols will still have a part to play in eco rounds, which should now hopefully be more skill based than before. He accepts that not every gun should be as used as the AK or M4, but they should at least have some kind of purpose. I mean, come on, look at the M249, it's a sorry excuse for a weapon. It even fails as a joke weapon when the far superior Negev is also available. It has been reworked to become more of a premium rifle that can one hit headshot at long range. In my opinion this is one of the most drastic changes in this mod, but I'm all for trying it out since it was as though the weapon didn't even exist before. I can't wait to see if it's used now that it's been improved so much. Fire away. Number 3. To make guns feel more intuitive to use by making the relation between certain variables more consistent. This means cleaning up a lot of the values. We might not have consciously felt these inconsistencies, but it makes the game less intuitive to learn. To rectify this, Sloth Squadron has introduced universal rules for the guns to follow, which you can find a more detailed breakdown of in the description of this video. Part of this has been a weight system, where the more the weapon slows you down, the more you're punished for running and gunning with it. Here's an example. The AK slows you down more than the M4, so it will be worse to run and gun with. The MP7 slows you down more than the MAC-10, so the same rule applies. However, some categories of weapons such as the SMGs don't get punished as much for running and gunning, so although the MP7 slows you down more than the M4, it still performs better when you run and gun with it. It sounds obvious and yet isn't how the game's values currently work, and I don't think that this is intentional. The same logic has been applied to many elements of Sloth Squadron's weapon mod. I'll now go through each of the weapon categories and list the changes. Pistols. He was influenced by Thorin's well received video, The Pistol Problem, and has made many radical changes to how they handle. Pistol first shot accuracy hasn't been improved as much as other weapon categories since they are suited for a different playstyle which often requires taking out opponents at close range and stealing their weapon. As stated in the previous video, the aim of this was to move the strategy away from lucky sprays by making them more accurate and skill based when stationary and by reducing their effectiveness when on the move. Sloth Squadron said that he started with how they were in earlier games, in which the real problem was how inferior they were when compared with the Deagle in terms of pricing and or firepower. They've all been adjusted differently to compensate for this. In general they're more expensive though. The Deagle now sits at $800 as the premium pistol. It is the only one hit headshot pistol against helmet wearing enemies and functions very similarly to how it did in earlier titles. The P2000 and USP have also borrowed from past games and no longer have a slower rate of fire when compared to other pistols. 
The Glock feels similar to its previous iterations but retains a lot of the benefits that CSGO blessed it with to try and keep pistol rounds fair. The dual Berettas were buffed significantly and should make for an excellent option on pistol rounds if you're willing to pay $700 for them. The P250, Tech 9, 5.7 and CZ75 Auto also see a lot of changes to keep them viable as eco pistols, though playtesting will show how viable they really are against the Deagle. Rifles As a crucial backbone of the game, the rifles have remained almost the same, though the accuracy buff promotes precision rather than spam. The M4A1S sees a few changes, such as harsher damage drop-off with distance, which should better balance it with the M4A4. The more expensive SG553 and AUG are the only ones that have been completely reworked to reduce their reliance on the scoped option, by making unscoped recoil easier to manage. Scoping is now more for long-range tap shots rather than for full-on spraying. Hopefully they see some use in competitive play. Snipers now that rifles are more precise, they begin to encroach on sniper territory, so the recent movement nerf has almost been completely reverted to make the scope weapons more effective again. The scout is slightly more expensive and can't scout jump, but deals slightly more damage and has a more powerful scope, similar to the AWPs. The snipers are now more accurate when scoped to reduce unfair misses. The AWPs kill reward is back to $300 again. The auto snipers have been made more different in function. The SCAR-20 inflicts less damage, meaning that it will now take three leg shots to kill. To compensate, it is a lot more precise if tap-fired. The Terrorist's G3SG1 has been made cheaper and more precise. With these improvements, perhaps Terrorists will have a sniper rifle better suited to their offensive playstyle. SMGs SMGs remain the best weapons for spraying when on the move, but have been toned down in some areas, particularly when jumping. Recent improvements to the run and gun aspect of both the MP7 and MAC-10 have been reverted since they were overshadowing other SMG and pistol choices for eco rounds. Shotguns This class provides cheap, risky weapons with high kill rewards. The spread has been tightened up for all but the Mag-7, and the Nova can now wallbang just as well as the other shotguns can. Some of them now deal less damage but fire more pellets to compensate, which reduces the randomness of the shots further. The XM1014 now has a faster fire rate to help it play a part in anti-eco rounds. Terrorists seldom use shotguns, especially the slow and underpowered Sword Off, so it has had significant buffs to its running speed and spread, which had also indirectly helped with damage. Its maximum range has also been upped, since before you wouldn't even hit the broadside of a barn if stood more than 650 units away. All shotguns are now less accurate when moving, meaning that you should stop to shoot for mid-range shots. It will be interesting to see if people begin opting for shotguns when in defensive positions after these changes take effect. LMGs these weapons still won't see much use in competitive play, but have had $700 knocked off their prices and now regain accuracy faster after firing. Sloth Squadron believes that the M249's accuracy was incorrectly calculated following the transition to CSGO, so it has been improved and now deals about as much damage as the AK-47, giving CTs a one-hit kill rifle, but at a price premium. It now has a more traditional, easier to learn spray pattern which makes it behave more like a rifle. Even the Zeus has been adjusted. It is now just as light as the knife and always does 100 damage, meaning that people can no longer survive the attack. It is perfectly accurate unless the player is jumping or on a ladder. These script files were originally designed by Hidden Path Studios during the Counter-Strike Source era, and while Valve has adjusted them to fix many of the problems with weapon balance since the game's release, their solutions have often been messy or incomplete. He believes that they have gotten better with them recently, but still haven't fully mastered the control they could potentially have over the weapon variables. By analysing the weapon script files, he has found far tidier solutions to problems and has concluded that there's more to the system than meets the eye. Sloth Squadron has been working on this project for over a year. I warned him not to get his hopes up about it, as it would be unlikely that any of his changes would be officially added to CSGO. That it was his word against the playtesting from hundreds of thousands of players and a hundred tournaments but he replied with something that made me believe. All he wants is for people to know just how much can be changed, that a lot of the things that players may have thought were set in stone can be altered, and that suggestions can be implemented. And even if Valve doesn't make the changes now, learning about these design philosophies and potential solutions will help them in the future. And that concludes my more in-depth look at the changes. If you need more information still, then check out the description of this video.